but which were the Albanian requests towards the Greek state that were expressed by the prominent Albanians to whom the Greek side was trying to come to an understanding? Well, let's see. These requests were mainly two and concerned the introduction of the Albanian language in Greek schools of Epirus and Albania and the introduction of the Albanian language in the Orthodox liturgy. As we have already mentioned, the undoubted prestige of Greek schools and their uh, great number too, had attracted a large number of Orthodox Albanian children, as well as Muslim Albanian children. Therefore, the operation of Greek schools formed one of the main foundations of Greek foreign policy in that specific part of the Ottoman Empire. The fact that Greece historically denied the introduction of the Albanian language in Greek schools of Epirus should not be considered as an indicator that Greece was opposed to the development of the Albanian language as well as the progress of the Albanian national sentiment in general. To strengthen this view, Greece helped to publish the Christophoridis direct, the dictionary since the three sons and heirs of Constantinos Christophoridis, a leading figure in the Albanian national movement, had put on the disposal of the Greek state the original work of their father by financial compensation in 1904. During the following years, the Greek, that Greek Albanian dictionary was repeatedly sent to Epirus and South Albania. With regard to the constant Greek denial to introduce the Albanian language in the Greek schools of Epirus and Albania, we ought to mention that by an important circular letter to all consulates of Epirus and Albania, the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs, after making a very detailed report of what should be considered as Epirus and what to be considered as Albania territorially, withdrew from the policy until then and accepted the introduction of the Albanian language in the Greek schools of Albania, as Albania was described in the circular letter. That important circular letter comes from 1912, only a few months before the declaration of Albanian independence. With regard to the other cons uh, consistent Albanian request, that of the introduction of the Albanian language in liturgy, that circular letter was making it clear once more that it was under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Uh, therefore, that matter could not even be discussed. We can see clearly the great importance given by the Albanian nationalists to the language, for the language being the tool that could unite Muslim, Orthodox, and Catholic Albanians. But in what alphabet should be written the Albanian language? Under the given circumstances, as it was natural, if the Greek alphabet had been used, that would have, that would have given an advantage to Greece. If the Arabic had been used due to the Muslim Albanian majority, it would have given a completely Muslim character in the, to the whole future Albanian state and surely not uh, only in education. Therefore, the adoption of the Latin alphabet was favored following a decision made by two conferences convened for that matter. One, one could argue that finally the less, let me say, harmful always in the Albanian point of view uh, alphabet was adopted. It sounds quite contradictory for a people with a Muslim majority and under these circumstances to adopt that alphabet, which was associatively and only connected with the smallest part of the Albanians, the Catholics. But what is the most uh, interesting for us is to detect how an ethnic identity is formed for identity issues being always important and also reflect ideological positions towards the past, the present and the future. As the choice of the alphabet helped the formation of Albanian identity, so the creation of a religious organization with a national orientation could also play that role. But what religious organization could, uh, uh, take, could take over that role given the fact of the religious division of the Albanian people? The negative position of the ecumenical patriarchate regarding to the introduction of uh, Albanian language in Orthodox liturgy contributed to a point to the formation of an Albanian Orthodox autocephalous church in USA in 1908. The members of the Albanian community in USA came mainly from Southern Albania and were Orthodox Christians. 
the first liturgy with the Orthodox standard in Albanian language took place in Boston in March the 22nd, 1908. The reason for the creation of the Albanian Autocephalus Church was the denial on behalf of the Greek priest to perform the funeral of a young Albanian man with the excuse of the latter being an Albanian nationalist. Unfortunately, the Greek side, both in this and in other cases, would not fully realize the progress of the Albanian national movement, sticking to the term imeteri, ours, our population, as we already mentioned before, referring to the Orthodox Albanians and using the term nationalist for those Orthodox Albanians that had moved from the old membership uh, state of uh, Rumilet, having embraced the new Albanian identity, an identity that was indeed being formed during that period. Even a few months before the declaration of Albanian independence, there are diplomatic papers talking about the Albanian ethnicity being under development. Well, it's certainly one thing to try to strengthen your position and try to give a desirable direction to the Albanian affairs. And it is a totally different thing, not being in a position to fully analyze the situation. Even if the formation of an Albanian national identity had really been under development, well, that, couldn't, uh, that wouldn't stop the change of status quo in the Western Balkans. If a general revolt outbroke, a general revolt that could be easily predicted as a series of Albanian revolts in Northern Albania had occurred in 1909 to 1911 with serious fights between the Albanian insurgents and Turkish forces sent to crush them. Moreover, as a result of these revolts, Albanian Catholic population who had, token, who, who had taken the arms against the Turks had fled to Christian Montenegro for two times in a row, returning to their villages only after the Turks had promised compensations for their destroyed properties by Turkish troops. Certain requests had been made to Greece to reinforce those consecutive Albanian revolts in the north to which Greece responded positively by sending guns and ammunition to the insurgents and by raising funds among the Greek communities in USA. Although, as it is reported, those funds were never given uh, to the Albanians uh, since a truce had already been announced uh, between the Albanians and the Turks. This is overall the context of Greek-Albanian relations from 1878 to the eve of Albanian independence in 1912. Greece, motivated by its fear of Slavism, foresaw in the Albanians that factor which could be a counterweight to Slavic expansionism in Macedonia. The fact that both Greeks and Albanians claimed the Pyrus as their own uh, was temporarily overlooked. But during the next period, that of Balkan Wars, that led to the rash declaration of Albanian independence. The issue of, uh, the issue of Hori Pyrus couldn't but come to the fore once again. Indeed, the intervention of the great powers had a negative impact to the Greek aspirations. The fact that the northern boundaries of the new Albanian state were drawn prior to the southern boundaries greatly contributed to the loss of northern Epirus for Greece and the loss of solid Greek population. Moving now to the last part of our presentation, let's take a look on a few things regarding the demarcation of boundaries between Greece and the new Albanian state. Albanian independence was declared by Ismail Kemal in Avlona in the 28th of November, 1912. Kemal had been cooperated with Greece for so long, as we saw, as we have already mentioned, uh, he had signed along with the Greek government the Memorandum of Greek-Albanian Understanding. Albanian independence was declared during the First uh, Balkan War, when the Albanian nationalists decided that in order to avoid the risk of the, of the lands they, con they considered to be Albanian lands, uh, being partitioned, be being partitioned uh, between the Balkan allies, had to declare independence of the Ottoman Empire. As an irony, the First Balkan War had been accelerated as a result of the occupation of the city of Skopje after another Albanian rebellion, just a few months before declaration of independence. Let's now consider something quite enlightening. Uh, before the fall of the city of Skopje, the Albanian insurgents submitted 14 claims to the Turkish government, threatening that if these 
uh, claims were not being fulfilled, they would advance and occupy Skopje, as they did. After the fall of Skopje, Turks accepted 12 of the 14 uh, Albanian claims, and most importantly, set for the first time the geographical definition of Albania, uh, granting virtually autonomy for Albania. Ismail Kemal then stated, our patriotic goals have been achieved and from now on, we are returning to our loyalty to the empire. We can see clearly that the ultimate aim of Albanian nationalism was autonomy and not independence by that part. Therefore, the theoretical question that naturally arises is whether that new status of autonomy had been consolidated if the first Balkan war had not broken out since, uh, since the Albanians stated that they were satisfied with the autonomy granted to them. That question is completely theoretical, nevertheless, uh, we ought to consider it. Uh, in any case, the undisputable fact remains that Albanian independence was declared as a result of the fear on behalf of the Albanians that, that their lands would be partitioned between the Balkan allies. Heading towards the end of the period under examination, we should refer to few things enlightening of the role of the great powers, their inability to fully understand the Balkan matters, and finally the reaction of the Greek population of Northern Epirus to their inclusion within the borders of the new Albanian state. During the first Balkan war, two parallel conferences were held in London, one to deal with the results of Albanian independence only a few days before, and one to deal with the matters that had arisen due to the first Balkan war. From the very start, from the very first session, the great powers decided that the new Albanian state would border with Montenegro in the north and Greece in the south so as not to be given to Serbia an exit to the Adriatic Sea. And since that was the case with Serbia, it was decided to be granted with Kosovo that was the, uh, inhabited by a majority of 90% by ethnic Albanians. And since the new Albanian state was not to incorporate Kosovo, it was considered as non-viable if North Epirus was not to be included to it. So, we can clearly detect the complex nature of Balkan issues and how issues that only seem to be unrelated and are essentially connected. We can also detect the crucial role of the great powers in the Western Balkans 100 years ago. Now, listen to this. Initially, the great powers in London only recognized an Albanian autonomy, even though the Albanians had declared their independence a few days earlier. Albanian independence was to be recognized only a year after its declaration in December 1913. Now listen to this. The Greek powers during the First Balkan War very early related the matter regarding the south border of the Albanian state, uh, North Epirus, with uh, that of the Aegean Islands to be conceded to Greece. But both North Epirus and the Aegean Islands had been liberated during the First Balkan War and were under Greek military position. Nevertheless, Greece was forced to give in to that blackmail on behalf of the great powers and announced that would consent to the border demarcation proposed by the powers, leaving the prefectures of Argyrokastro and Koritsa outside Greek territory. To make things worse, Greece was obliged to evacuate the lands of North Epirus as an essential precondition of taking control of the Aegean Islands, except Imbros and Tenedos. Greek objections resulted to the decision that an international committee should be sent to the disputed lands for field research in order to proceed with the final demarcation of the borderline. The mother tongue of the inhabitants would serve as the criterion for the integration of each settlement on either side of the border. Greece was opposed to that criterion, considering national consciousness as the most secure criterion. Anyway, the controversial task of the committee was undermined right from the start by many factors. Uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, by many factors. Uh, and certainly not by the Greek military authorities as the Austrian and Italian representatives believed it would happen. 
The contrast of views between the representatives of France and Russia, more favorable to the Greek views on the one side, and the representatives of Austria, Hungary, Italy, and Germany, who favored a border line that met the Albanian aspirations on the other side, led to a dead end. In 58 days, the committee had only examined 14 people, 58 days, 14 people in only six villages, but for which Albanian state was all this effort being made. The authority of the government under Ismail Kemal, who had declared Albanian independence a year ago, a year ago was only solid uh, in Avlona region. Anarchy prevailed in most parts of the country and the Muslim oriented revolution even broke out by Esad Pasa, who had formed a government of his own in Dirachio. The International Control Committee for Albania, that meanwhile had been formed in an unpresented and also uh, quite grotesque, uh, without a doubt, uh, act, uh, recognized the two governments as, surprise, surprise, equal. The two governments as equal. And what about the Turkish factor? Uh, what did the Turks uh, for their former rampart in Western Balkans? Well, Turkey instiga instigated another uprising in, in Albania with the revolts raising the Turkish flag. flag. This uprising was preceded by the enthronement of Prince William of Bid uh, in, at the, on the throne of Albania, a German prince selected by the great powers. The two equals, as we mentioned, governments left for Europe. The reaction of the Greek population of the regions to be annexed to Albania was initially the formation of guerrilla bands. Before the outset of the scheduled withdrawal of the Greek forces from North Epirus, the Panipyrotic Convention in Argyrokastro declared that the Epirotes, since they had been deprived of their legitimate right to be united with Greece, they would only accept for themselves local autonomy or, in the worst case, an international occupation of their lands. That statement was announced in 13th of February 1914. The autonomous democracy of North Epirus was declared in Argyrokastro in the 28th of February, 1914. Maybe in contrast with what someone would think, the new ruler of Albania, William of Vid, accepted to negotiate with the Epirus, proposing to them a kind of local self-government with a Christian commander and educational and religious freedoms. Uh, Epirus being aware of their own power and also being aware that Vid's authority was in peril due to another uprising, initially denied his proposals, counter-proposing more specific privileges for them to be granted. When finally the great powers responded to the note made by Greece, calling for guaranteed privileges regarding education and religions for the pirates, the government of William of Vid agreed for granting uh, those privileges and the negotiations between the prince and the pyros resulting in the signing of the protocol of Corfu in 17th of May 1914, by which Greek claims were being accepted. The protocol of Corfu was validated by the great powers, the Albanian government, and at last by the pyros. Thus, a basis was set regarding the rights of the pyros, whose lands were annexed to the new Albanian state even if the upcoming First World War would once more overthrow the status quo in the Western Balkans. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we, we have uh, ended. Would you, would you like to have the, the, the slides now? Yes, I think now is the time. Uh, it's not something okay. special. Uh, there are pictures of uh, the assembly of the North Epirus. That, that is the assembly, the assembly. Thank you. Uh, εδώ λοιπόν το, αυτή η φωτογραφία είναι από τους uh, βορειοεπιρώτες την ημέρα που κήρυξαν την uh, uh, αυτόνομη βορειοεπιρώτη. Βλέπουμε και you, τη σημαία. Just a second, just a second. I'm starting from the beginning. Could you please explain in English also for the... Uh, we see is the it... assembly. Mm -hmm. We see the assembly uh, by by Greek population, uh, where uh, it, they declared the uh, autonomy. And uh, here is the flag. We can see the flag. We should move to the flag. The picture with the flag. Well, 
I can go back, so we will have to go. The flag is coming later. Okay, uh, these uh, these uh, are uh, the borders. Uh, as we see um, with the yellow, uh, we we see the the borders proposed by the Albanian government. Ah, now now it's now it's other uh, map. Wow, well, uh, because just a second. It's, it's in Greek, so. Okay, let's go again here. Here, okay. Yes. Here, okay, okay. Uh, with the yellow line, we see the proposed borderline uh, made by the. This is the, the yellow line, yes. Now, now we yeah, see the other one. Okay. Oh, you want the next one? Um, I would like to add something to the to the former map. Oh, the former the okay. previous map. Yes, uh, Libon, uh, with the yellow line, we see the proposed border uh, of um, the Greek, of the Albanian uh, uh, government, which uh, was to include uh, the region of uh, Kosovo. Uh, not having uh, uh, at least uh, Kosovo, that led to, um, to grant uh, uh, to the Albanian state the North Epirus. So we see that uh, those matters uh, are connected. Uh, Kosovo and uh, Kosovo, a great problem uh, even nowadays. We remember well uh, the war uh, 20 years ago. Right? Uh, with the with the, the green uh, line, uh, we have um, the the border line proposed by the allies, by the Western allies. And uh, with the purple, we see uh, by those those uh, proposed by Italy and Austria Hungary. As we see, uh, also the borders uh, proposed uh, by Austria and Austria Hungary and Italy, uh, powers favorable to the Albanians, uh, did not include uh, the Kosovo region. Okay. And uh, those of the Western uh, allies are uh, extremely um, tighter. Okay. Uh, we, we should go to the other map. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, in that map, we, we can see uh, once again uh, the border uh, uh, proposed by the Albanian government in 1913. And um, it's, uh, uh, how can I say it now? Uh, it's, it's with the same color, so it can, it can be described properly. Uh, it's once again- uh, uh, the, the dark it, lines? Yes, yeah, it's quite uh, the same with the, uh, the previous map. But uh, in, general, in general, we should uh, consider uh, uh, that um, the borderline uh, uh, granted to Albania was uh, a triumph of uh, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Uh, their policy uh, thrived. And uh, that led to, that contributed significantly to the loss of Northern Epirus. Uh, Greece uh, was in a weak state and uh, the, the, the event that uh, firstly uh, the north border, the northern border of uh, Albania was set, uh, that uh, was to be uh, extremely harmful for the Greek question. And now we see the flag of uh, autonomy, autonomous North Epirus, 1914, February. And, uh, and I have uh, one book that um, has this, um, uh, this this paper between others, and uh, to have a, a look um, uh, about the national Albanian movement in general, uh, let me uh, read you. Uh, this is this is an, um, an enclosure by the chiefs of North Albanian mountain tribes, Catholics, to the um, to the to the British consul. Okay, uh, they say they state that the privileges uh, with the government of His Imperial Majesty the Sultan has always granted us the liberty of faith, of language, of usages, customs, and habits, 
give valid proof of our full commitment, contentment to belong to the glorious dynasty of his imperial majesty, the Sultan, to which we are devoted and faithfully united through centuries of traditions. Well, uh, this is an example of um, uh, how divided they were the Albanians. And um, we can see by the expressions, okay, uh, to his imperial majesty, the Sultan, to the glorious dynasty of his uh, imperial majesty, the Sultan, uh, we can see what were the problems of uh, an Albanian movement to be formed uh, uh, to unite all uh, Albanians, uh, regardless being uh, Catholic, Orthodox, and uh, Muslim, who were the majority. Uh, it has a, a, a great um, um, the, the expressions of this uh, in, in this. Uh, paper is uh, are, uh, quite enlightening about that situation. And that is uh, our, uh, our, our presentation with a uh, few uh, things. After then, 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 so the these are highlights in both languages. These are the highlights in both languages of the topics to be discussed. Yes. 